Coming up on tonight's House of Tiny Tearaways. You wouldn't get mummy, would you? Oh, look at Toby. <laughs> Just think, God, though, them. why do we do this? It's the final morning of the final week of this series of the House of Tiny Tearaways. So far, we've seen nine families come in at breaking point, but with Tanya's help, they've all left with life-transforming skills. Now it's time for this week's families to leave. So are they ready to go home? Three families, the Goltons. Don't hit me. The Davis family. <laughs> and the Oshitolas have arrived in the house, desperate for clinical psychologist Dr Tanya Byron to help them tackle their children's extreme problems. With just one day to go, all the families are hoping that Tanya can solve their problems and turn their lives around for good in the house of Tiny Tearaways. It's the final day in the house for this week's three families who have all sat down for breakfast together round the dining table. All right, civilised as well, isn't it, with all of us round the table? <laughs> the only time we've managed to get us all to sit down at yeah, any time right. this yeah. week, isn't it? It's it's normally, normally, we've not managed right. to do it. Thank you. What? This is a mega yoghurt. What you do is, you lick the lid, like that. Amelia, I didn't say you could get down. Well, I don't want to sit down. No, Amelia, you sit at the table till we're all finished. Let's not have a tantrum first thing in the morning. You can do it. I'd really do without it. Matthew and Natalie Davis came to the house with four-year-old daughter Amelia, whose fussy eating and restricted diet was seriously worrying her parents. As well as realising how their anxiety was fueling the problem, over the last two days, Tanya has helped Matthew and Natalie to see that Amelia's issue is not simply about eating. It's so bizarre, though, isn't it, to think you came in here with the issue of the eating and, and it's gone out with another one. completely different tangents yeah. and... You've gone out with another. Yeah. With only a few hours left in the house, the Davis family are faced with the realisation that, for them, it's not going to be a quick fix. What are you looking at? Another yoghurt? No. You do it to me. No! I don't You can do it to me. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Amelia, <laughs> would you help them clear it off? Yes. Thank you, darling. <laughs> Thank you, darling. <laughs> She's got this, like, tiny little... Working. It's not, not working. working. <laughs> Try again. The Davis family came in a week ago with daughter Amelia, who's four, who had a... A real eating problem. Mm -hmm. um, how have you treated them this week and are they ready to leave? I have felt that this week with the Davis family has been more of an extended assessment than an actual treatment week and each day brings something new. I think it was apparent really early on it wasn't really um, an eating problem as in the fact that Amelia doesn't eat the right kinds of foods because we established early on in the week across the food group she does all right, it's very restricted, but she does cover yeah. all her food groups. And then I sort of broaden out my view and see that we have quite an anxious mum who wipes this child and also her brother within an inch of their lives. So we start to think more about anxiety. And here we have two parents who are incredibly successful and who get results in whatever they do. Very early on, I knew with Amelia and with her whole family to go down the road that pushed for results, A, would not be appropriate given how I understand the problem now, but B, wouldn't be possible. My fear was that she would leave the house eating less than when she came in. Are you worried that the Davis family as a whole, that mum and dad are going to leave feeling quite deflated? They probably in their head thought by Friday Amelia's going to be eating strawberries or a roast dinner or lots of things that you've managed to do before. I have heard a couple of things over the last couple of days from Natalie and I'm just looking at her and seeing that she's looking I think quite vulnerable 
And I understand why she feels that. And on one level, I think that's probably not such a bad thing. But on another level, I can't let her leave feeling like that until we've put it into some kind of context. So that's why I feel today I've got a huge amount of treatment to do with the Davies, whereas with my other two families, the Goldens and the Oshitolas, I feel the work is really very much done. Following breakfast, the Galton family are playing in the activity area. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say that. Show me. Do a little wiggle smack. <laughs> Don't hit yourself with a spade. That's silly. <laughs> Chris and George Galton arrived on Sunday with sons Joe, Toby and Terraway Harry. <laughs> His bad behaviour and aggressive tantrums were causing them serious concern. Throughout the week, Tanya's encouraged parents Chris and George to assert more authority with Harry and to think about him in a more positive light. His behaviour has drastically improved, but will Chris and George be able to keep up this momentum when they leave the house? See, normally you get told off for that. Ow, ow. Was it Tony's taught us to be more tolerant? Tolerate <laughs> <laughs> uh, right the pain a little bit hard. longer. Not too hard. No, no more then. Good boy. Over in their bedroom, the Oshitola family are packing. Oh. Jess, why don't you dance, okay? Uh, 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 uh. Jesse. Oh, Jesse. Oh, Jesse. <laughs> The Oshitolas were at their wits' end because of two-year-old son Jesse's extreme sleeping problem. Since arriving, they've made good progress, establishing a new bedtime routine and have begun to be more united in their parenting. As a result of their efforts, Jesse has been sleeping in his own bed throughout the night and there's also been a noticeable reduction in the frequency of his tantrums. You are now treating him like a two-year-old. He has a two-year-old routine. Yeah. You have given him permission to be a little boy. And he's a happier little boy as a result of it. Look at him. The Oshitolas arrived in the house six days ago with two-year-old Jesse, who I think it's safe to say had a severe sleep problem, would go to bed at one o'clock in the morning after having been ridden up and down the corridor on a bicycle, didn't really have any routine, would often sleep in till midday. Um, how are they doing? We have taken his whole pattern, his whole routine, and shifted it from go to sleep at one o'clock in the morning, wake up at 10, and we've pushed it right back. The Oshitolas now have their evenings back. They also have a united front for their child, not only in sleep, but also behaviour. They also are talking to each other much more and sharing the parenting decisions rather than running across each other and arguing in front of their child. I think it's a family that's got itself a bit of order, got itself a sense of purpose and direction, and most importantly, got parents who are working as a team. While Matthew Davis looks after the children in the lounge, Mum Natalie is in the green suite, where she's been lying on her bed for the last 20 minutes. Yesterday, Tanya spoke to Natalie and Matthew Davis about their daughter Amelia's fussy eating and revealed that the issue around mealtimes is part of a much larger problem. There has to be a point, I think, where this little lady knows that she is not in charge. And I have to tell you, she's completely in charge. Mm. Tanya has entered the house to have a one-to-one -one chat with Mum Natalie. I have a feeling that this isn't ending well for you this week and that you probably haven't got what you came for and I think you're possibly feeling that you're leaving with more problems than you came in. Oh, I feel like I've let you down. No, I don't, it's not that you've let me down at all because what you've done is actually... A, you've not let me down. You've let... I, you've let us understand it better and that's why in a way I feel more upset So you need someone else to say right this is what's happening you know Matthew you go away she was an absolute nightmare for a day you, you and you come back and it all washes over mm. him you know over you know and I kind of 
do the battleground bit and it's not held together well. So it, you do need someone else. It's not, you've actually made us see how that is. And it's kind of, I already kind of knew that. I don't want him to be just a dad that, I think she should be worried that her father's coming home and that she's not behaved properly. I was as a child and it didn't, I have a wonderful relationship with my father and it, it's only better now than it was when I was a child because I had a bit of fear and respect for him. But a kind of, I st you know, you have that kind of fear that, you know, what happens when you get home is that you go back to normal life, you mm -hmm. go back to the way everything is, and then all of a sudden you find that we're having the same battle, t you know, two, three weeks down the line. I felt really strongly that trying to force this child to eat this week would be the worst mm. thing that, that any of us could do. Mm. But trying to help you and Matt in different ways and together understand the function of her problem, I think... I felt was my job and I think the fact that you're feeling like this is so alien for you but I think is the beginning of, of major change for you and her. Just give it time I think to get over this experience to relax and just to I think actually to stop making food an issue with her and see what happens. Mm. So can I leave you with these thoughts? Yes you can. All right darling shall I get Thank him to come you. down or do you want to? Yeah no you, can, you tell him to come down you can bring Lucas and we'll put him down. And All right then. Thank bit. you. All right. Hi. Have you been outside? Mwah. Bogey nose, lovely. Um. Oh. Is he gone already? No, he's rolling about. How was that then? Well, she was a bit. Well, very interesting, really, because she's kind of saying how, um, you know, do I feel she's let let us down, and do I, and how I felt right now, because I feel, I do feel disappointed. But if we leave here and you step up, the way you approach her, you know, as a father, yeah, that will take the pressure off me to have to be the one to always have to be the bad guy yeah. and criticise, which then will probably release some of my anxiety. Mm. And then so the, various, the, 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 the whole thing should catalyst should, to the fact that she should end effect. up eating. Yeah, because she won't just... have me being constantly this anxious, do this, do that, do da 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 mm. manic mother, mm. which is probably how she does see me. I'd like them to see me as happy mummy. Yeah. I don't get to have any fun with her anymore because she's at nursery every day. Given that United message and rules and Just all think the rest God, of it. Though, why do we do this? <sighs> well, let's just look at one thing at a time, isn't it? Try and change one thing, and the knock on effect should be for the others. Hey? I'm okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Following his conversation with wife Natalie, Matthew Davis is in the garden talking to Michael Oshitola. Well, that's, that's one of the things that we've been talking about this week, really, is yeah. you know, if, if Nat's with them all day and stuff, and, and uh, you know, she'll ring me up and say, where are you? I've had a hell of, you know, a really yeah. hellish day. I mean, it's been a nightmare. He's been screaming, his teeth are hurting, blah, blah, blah. But one thing that, you know, I haven't, I haven't looked at it like is to then come home and register with Amelia that I know them. Must you've had a, you've given mummy a real <laughs> day, yeah, and you know she's unhappy. Therefore, I'm unhappy, and sit there the two of us, and you know. But you never that. do. I mean, no, I mean, it's, I come in and you know I'll take over the stuff, or just and that, and just can just you know either carry on with him or, or yeah. her or whatever, and just 
help and get them in bed and read my story and put them to bed. So. You don't adopt the mood swing and how it's been for no, the day. No, because I've not yeah. been there all day. Well, yeah, this is it. No, it's the same. I, I do the same with Jess. I never really thought about it. Well, I knew it was wrong, but I call Kevin during the day and she would say X, Y, and Z, and yeah. Jess is screaming in the background. Like, yeah. Fine, fair enough. And such a big deal. I'll get home and sort it out. Yeah. I can't remember. Take Jesse, put him on my lap, give him a few biscuits, which I shouldn't be doing. <laughs> Shh, don't tell your mum. <laughs> do you know what I mean? And I've, I've, done, I've done all the hard work Kevin's done all day. Unraveled and, and all the hard work, yeah. yeah. I never thought about it, and there's only one who got explained to me today that yeah. that ain't really the best thing to be doing. That no. yeah, she's right. She's right. You don't think about how you should be. You just think, okay, I'll come in. Yeah, I'll sort just, it out, just take, and that's it. just yeah. take, take. So it's almost yeah. like take him away, and can we just you know chill out, sit down? Yeah. I'm, I'm here now. I'll, I'll sort it out. I'll do the bath. I'll do the bed. I'll yeah. do all the other stuff, and you relax. And yeah, I think it seems like everybody's learnt something and got something out this week anyway. Yeah. As a final activity, Tanya's asked Mum Natalie to make some biscuits with Amelia. Tanya wants her to use cooking as a form of messy play. I can't do it, Mummy. I'll stir it. Yeah. Right, we need fingers in here now. Get your hands in, Amelia. Mummy needs help. I need help to get your hands in. You've got to make it into a ball like we did the other day I with the clay. Like the sand balls. Okay. Is he? Yeah. Is he a bit of a chef, is he already? What does he cook? You want, do you know what you're going to do when you've done it, Amelia? You want to lick your fingers. Because all the sugar on your fingers will be delicious. I think we've done it. Well done. So that is the biscuits. And we then to lick it and taste it. It's delicious. Is it good? We squeeze that on the tray. Take the edges off. Uh, you do some more. Whilst Harry, Joe and Toby are looked after by the Davises, parents Chris and George join Tanya for their final chat. I've got a plan for the consultation that is different to how I normally do these final consultations which is that um, I'm not, I don't want to run this consultation, I want you to run this consultation and I want you to tell me, as I show you your week, I want you to tell me what you're seeing and how you've done. Mm -hmm. Now we all inhabit a, a very similar vocational world, mm -hmm. you've worked in psychiatry for years, both of you. Mm -hmm. What I have noticed about you both is that your psychiatric background was a big almost like a big handicap to you as parents. It disabled you to be effective parents because you were re reflecting on Harry as if he was a patient, yeah. a problem, mm. rather than a person, mm. your little boy. So I am going to play clip after clip after clip. The first one is just for us to remember the place you were in before you came in. Since Harry was about nine months old, he's been very, very independent. Um, he will not let anyone do anything for him. <coughs> Kicking, screaming, shouting. Wait a minute, calm down. Right. Is this actually Harry? Because he's built up such a reputation of his personality just changing so quickly that other children don't want to play with him. <laughs> And a lot of people don't see his sweet side, you know, and it breaks my heart. I mean, he's my baby. Just totally negative. Just everything we were saying was negative. You know, I said that no one can see his sweet side. But we weren't either. But we were telling it. Where we were. I didn't want to say, you know, I said he's <coughs> a baby, but I didn't want to sort of say anything really nice about him. It was all just negative. So you label yeah. a child a problem? What happens? It becomes become a problem. A problem. Yeah. And I just want to show you a clip of a tantrum, mm. something that went on. And again, I'm not going to tell you why I'm showing it, but I'm, I, I'd like to ask you afterwards, what are you seeing mm. here and, and what is all this about? Yeah. Shall I cut your spaghetti up for you, Harry? <coughs> yeah, we're cutting it all up, darling. We have to be cut. Don't use your fingers, darling. I'm cutting it so you don't have to use your fingers. I'm cutting it for you. Yeah. No. I want it cut. It's got to be cut, darling, because you can't eat it otherwise. Right, let go. 
Harry, you can't Harry, use the go. knife, darling. Knives are dangerous. No. Should just let him get on and not worry about the dinner. If he was eating it and making a mess, let him eat it and make a mess. If we didn't know that Harry was sitting in that chair, who would we have thought you were speaking to? An adult. An adult with psychiatric problems who was mm. about to have a big outburst, I felt. Yeah. Mm. I kind of... I, that, for me, felt like you were running a ward. Mm. Which you both have done. Mm. Yeah. Well, I don't understand why we didn't do that with Joe. Why? Because Joe didn't present the same way. Joe just rolled because... over and said, OK, Mummy, Daddy. Mm. And got on with it. Yeah. So then we get an understanding, you know, you say, why not with Joe? Why with mm. Harry? Yeah. Also, because Harry came at a time when you were probably both at your lowest yeah. as individuals mm. and as a couple. But it's my fault I let it affect Harry. You know, I mean, I know I was going through a really rough period in my life and it's not his fault he was born around that time. You know, and he, should, he was the one positive thing amongst all of that. You know, I went through all of that up during his pregnancy and he should have been my one little star that kind of just kept me going. But instead, I, I, instead I just kind of brought him... I just included him in all that trauma. I need to say this to you really, really clearly. It, I have no doubt in my mind that you have had a long and complicated postnatal depression since Harry's birth. And I don't think you wanted to see that, although it had been pointed out to you, because it frightened you, you felt that you were becoming a patient. Now, the reason I need to say this to you really clearly is because there are many, many women who have children, have babies, and become postnatally depressed and are too afraid to talk about it and are too afraid to seek help for it because they somehow believe it makes them a bad mother. And I need to say to you really clearly, Georgie, that you are an extremely good mother. You had postnatal depression, and that wasn't your fault. That was not your fault that you were depressed. And this incident that I'm going to show you now, I think reflects quite well some of the conversations we started having and you started having. So have a look at this and then tell me, hmm. you run the show, what have you seen here? Really? <laughs> Do that again, you'll go to your bedroom. I'm cross with you because you kicked Mummy. Are you listening to me? If you kick Mummy again, I will take you to your room. OK? So no more kicking. Dad, you're not very cross, really, was I? <laughs> I'm very cross with you. <coughs> yeah, I'm really very cross with you, you know. Would you like a cup of tea? Yeah. <laughs> Shall we go to the park? Yeah. yeah. Don't kick your yeah. mother. Hmm. And yeah. so we then went on and we've worked on that and I've yeah. got a cracking example of how well you can do it. Ah! Can you do a headstand? Can you do a headstand? Can it right, do a headstand? Right, go to your room. Now. Yeah. To your not, room. Not that thing. You do not hit me. Sit on your bed. Stay there for a minute. I can, of course I can. He's just not a problem anymore, is he? No. I was firmer and he went straight away. I didn't have to carry him or hold his hand or drag him there. He went. He just walked in and I said, now, open the door. He just walked straight in. There was no, you know... When children know where they stand, when... Mm. They can see Mummy's face and Daddy's face is saying, this makes me feel great, you're being lovely. Mm. Or they can see, no, I'm not mm. happy with this. I think that is showing mm. your child respect. Yeah. And what was so lovely about that, and the reason I wanted it to play out until the end, is that you came out... And it was forgotten. And what a team again. He mm. saw his parents as a team. <laughs> Cuddle, kiss, he's not a problem anymore. What has this week meant to the two of you, tell me? Or maybe oh, you were just it's just... We've just achieved what we wanted. We've got a happy... Got our son back. We've become a family. You 
wait a minute, he's going to come at you. <laughs> Joe and Harry Galton have been making biscuits for the last 50 minutes. <laughs> you look like cat. <laughs> 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 your head. Right here. Look at the stain. No. Oh, I'm not sure about putting that on you. <laughs> How's it going? Hysterical. Oh, my word. He's <laughs> <laughs> right. been okay. stitches. <laughs> He's been slapping it in his face and all sorts. Slapping it in your face. <laughs> uh, excuse me. <laughs> 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 One's done, then we can get these in the oven. Right. Okay. No cake's complete without an egg. Out the firing line now. I mean, uh, oh. Ouch. put the hard boiled one in. <laughs> What's wrong? Gonna get down. The Goldens arrived in uh, the house a week ago with their three boys, very, very concerned about their middle one, Harry, who would have the most massive tantrums. He was incredibly loud on Sunday. How are they now? They are like a family transformed, and I, I'm really loath to say that because it sounds like I'm blowing my own trumpet and be, <laughs> you know, oh, can you transform in six days? Well, I think actually you can. The Goltons are a really good example of that. Theirs is a story about a little boy who has been made responsible for all the problems that have gone on within the system, the family system, and that has had a direct result on his behaviour. Take the child out of the mess, the pain, the chaos, all the other difficulties. Take the spotlight off his behaviour. Notice when he's being lovely more than when he isn't. You have a different child. And I have to say, a totally different mother. If we, as parents, have children, not just for the sake of having a child, but because they are supposed to fix something else in our lives, if that child has a function beyond just them being a child, that is a recipe for disaster. And Harry, I think, is a proper three-year-old boy who has been labelled and judged, and I think now that people are beginning to see him for who he is and celebrating him for who he is, tantrums and lovely, gorgeous smiles, he's a happy, happy child. Can we borrow your truck? Can we put the bricks in there? That's a truck, yeah? Put them in then. While Jesse helps Harry and Chris Galton tidy up, parents Kemi and Michael have joined Tanya in the consultation room. Tell me about your week. It feels like we achieved so much in just like one Short day, not even a week. Yeah, that's very yeah. true. Actually. The only thing I expected was for Jesse to just get out of her bed. And now we've achieved, like, he's eating, behaviour. When you tell him something, he listens. Yeah, definitely listens. It's well. unlike Jesse to do that. Can I please remind you of what your life was like before you came into the house? He has a very bad sleeping routine. <laughs> he'll start to kick, scream. If you're obviously trying to lay him down, he'll pull you, he'll bite you, he'll pinch you. Sometimes I put him on his um, bicycle and just go around the corridors. I just want him to get into a routine whereby he fall asleep at a decent time and get up at a, a decent time as well. So, how did that look to you? I felt stupid. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Coming yeah. up and down the lead, um, down the corridors. It's very different to how it is now. <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, let's just be fair. There was kind of logic in your craziness. What <laughs> you were trying to do was to have some time with him. You were trying to tire him out yeah. and a lot of parents say to me I'm going to tire my child mm -hmm. out in order to get to sleep but when you see him in the cot and how he was ah, yeah. ah, ah, yeah. you can see how you pumped him up to such a degree that he was like <laughs> I mean who can go to sleep after <laughs> racing around the corridors and going up and down in the lift and doing you know backflips on their trampoline <laughs> shall we just quickly review sleep because you did come in for sleep now he slept for 11 and a quarter hours last night 
you actually decided to stay outside the room last night a bit, and that was a very, very good strategy because he did actually settle himself. Yeah. Now, that for me tells me this child has learnt how to go to sleep mm -hmm. on oh, his yeah, own. Yeah, definitely. We got the sleep up and running. We were doing some behaviour management. So all that's in place. But I started to get a bit worried because I thought, but hold on a second, these parents are still not coming together. There was a lot of thinking that we needed to do together about how you were going to parent him because you became very, very split. Mm -hmm. So can I just give you an example of when you do split and yeah. what happens? That would be great. <coughs> Yeah, then I look and see if I can't even put him to sleep. Of course you can. <laughs> you are right. Nah. Is he not going he down? He fell asleep and his dad just came in and ruined everything, didn't he? <laughs> you said daddy job. <laughs> if your child has a sleep problem and one of you is trying to deal with it and I think doing pretty well it took time but you were being calm and he was beginning to settle for the other one to come in and suddenly take over <laughs> yeah. oh, not such a good idea and then to argue over the child mm. who actually you're trying to get to sleep would you recommend that no I mean no. I, w I wouldn't do to be honest yeah I'd like to show you an example of how teamwork um, works for children <laughs> Huh? Come inside. No! 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 Just his bedtime now. Bedtime. No! Bedtime. No! Yes. want to go to sleep but then we started to think more broadly and I with my I have to say with my heart slightly racing because I didn't know how you're going to take this but I said to you look I think your son actually needs to be managed in a different way throughout the whole day not just at night time yeah. because I do think that he might have some behavioral problems and maybe the fact that he's controlling you isn't just at night time but he controls you during the day again and if you remember there was a lunch time where there was a particular train incident and, Harry, yeah. and everything. Let's just look at it to remind ourselves, because we are seeing a different child now, but it was, it was quite full on. This is the lunchtime where he had his big tantrum. Okay. We're going to play a game. We're going to play a game. Play a game. Eat food and not have a game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get down. You want toast? You want toast? No. Jesse, look, look. They're playing. Eat your chicken. Eat your chicken. There you go, there. Come on, there. No. Well <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he completely got his own way. Gosh. Okay, so yeah, what, what is it? What, what, what did we learn from that little incident? Not to let him have his way. Never to let him have his way. Um, and if we say something, just mean it. Make sure you know Yeah, just be more it. clear and direct yeah. as to what we're saying and what we're meaning and what we're trying to get him to understand. Because I think we probably gave him more than a, enough mixed messages now. And your big fear was if you got too authoritarian with your son, he wouldn't be happy and he wouldn't be your friend. I don't know. I just didn't necessarily want to make him cry or unhappy. And um, yeah. I should have thought that that's not necessarily always going to be the case because kids' memory is quite short at this stage and they don't remember things like that. It's just a case of um, making sure that the best is done for Jesse. But what's interesting to me is actually once you set some clear boundaries for your child, once you say to them no, once you ignore a couple of tantrums, they become happier children, yeah, not definitely. sadder children, don't yeah. they? Yeah, that's exactly it. Uh, we cannot ignore what is staring us in the face, which mm. is a much happier child who can now sleep in a bed on his own and you've done that by being more authoritative with him and I think that was a big thing for you.
it was clear in my mind that we were coming here to deal with Jesse in his sleep. But part of that is obviously myself and Kevin, how we are towards him. I don't think it's something I really gave that much thought to prior to coming in here. And what do you think's changed the most about you as a father? Probably that I am um, probably listening to Kemi more and I think we've got to try and concentrate more on Jesse and uh, make sure we do the best for him. What's changed about you, Kemi, as a mum? As a mum, I'm calmer with Jesse and um, I've been able to understand him more, as in when we have to talk and come to an agreement. Understand Michael more? Yes, understand Michael more. Mm -hmm and come to an agreement when it comes to Jesse's behaviours and everything, every other thing concerning Jesse. And is that a good thing? Yeah, it's a very good thing. Yeah. yeah. It's worked out so far, so it's going to go a long way. Tani's organised a magic-themed lunch. She's watching Natalie Davis as she tries to manage daughter Amelia. I don't want to eat my cheese. Mummy, I yeah. don't want to eat my Fresh. cheese. I'd like you to eat it, please. No. Why not? Because I don't want to. You eat it every other day. So why would you not eat it now? Isn't that fascinating? Because Amelia has sat there and said, I'm not going to eat my cheese, about four times. Mm. I mean, almost fishing for her mum. Go, come on, come on, mm. this is abnormal. Mm. It's all about attention, it's all about control, it's all about her relationship with her mum, it's all about how she can split her parents. It's all about what goes on, I think, uh, throughout the day. It'd be very interesting to see if they ignore her, whether she does actually eat her cheese. Or whether she starts having a tantrum about something else. I yes. Mean, j just to get, like, look at me, what's going on. Yes, totally. This is abnormal. I can't eat this one either. Why? Right. Because it's not fresh anymore. Right, there you go. Have that one. If you eat that, you can have a chocolate roll. Otherwise, there's not one. OK? Dobby, zobby, loggy, dobby, loggy, zobby, loggy, 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 Come on, Matt, help Natalie here. Look, they're really thinking, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? They don't look happy, do they? No. For Natalie and Matt to get everybody in their lives to ignore this behaviour at the meal table is going to be very difficult because nothing makes people freak out more than children not eating very much. It's true. He looks very stressed, doesn't he? Yeah. I can't open this bit. Put it! Wow. She is now attention seeking behaviour. I can't open it. Whereas I know, obviously, she this is fascinating. Mm -hmm. What was that? Look at them. Happy. Mum and Dad, you see, this could actually work. I just think she's getting so much of being ignored. See, it kind of unconsciously goes towards her mouth, and then she realises when she says, "Oh, I can't get, I can't open this." He's almost paralysed, isn't he, Dad Matthew? Just not saying anything. Nothing. Right. Yeah. Good night. Good. Dad, don't do Now she's eating her cheese. Is she? Yeah, and she's eating her cheese because they ignored her. But boy, did that take a long time. I mean, you can see why under the pressure they would crack because she's tricky at the t meal table, but I think because she knows that that's how to get attention. Yeah. We've never had a child like Amelia in the house. This is, this is a very different kind of feeding problem. What defines hers? Behaviour. It's all about behaviour. Right. But there is quite a bit of anxiety and a little bit of phobic kind of response to new foods thrown in, so it makes it a much more complicated type of problem to treat. Michael and Kemi Oshitola are following Tony's advice and working as a team to settle Jesse down for his nap. Bye, Bye. see you later, Jesse. No. See you later. No. Come. No. Oh. Ah. I'm going inside. No. Come inside. Come. Did you see it? Come with mum and dad. I did. I'm gonna hide. I'm gonna hide. Yes, it come. Come and close the door, close it! Hide. Hide, 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 Take your shoes off, come on, hide. It's coming, I know, I can see it. I can oh see gosh. it, Kemi, hide. It's coming, Is it look. coming? Oh, 
Jesse, take your jacket off. Cover your head. <laughs> Hurry up. Ah. Hurry up. Come and put Jesse yeah. on his bed. Hide quickly. him. Oh, quickly, don't Hide him. Don't shut the door. Hide Jesse. <laughs> Hide Jesse there. <laughs> put Jesse there. <laughs> I'm going to hide. <laughs> Are you hiding? Yeah, that is hiding as well. <laughs> Hi, Dad. Are you going to hide? hide? hide Let's read the story so it won't come and get us. Yeah, read the story. Where's the story? <laughs> Give that jacket back. Look, I'm going to put the light on. If I don't put it on, I'm going to get it. I'm going to go get it. This is the story See you later, of Jesse. I'm going to get it. Mm. Give mommy a kiss. Give mommy a kiss. I'm going to go get it now. All right. This is the story of Jack. When Jack was a baby, he snatched another baby's rattle. And everyone said, give that back, Jack. Come on, look, look. Let me put it down for you, look. Yes. Look. Yes. Yes. See? When it's time to... <laughs> when it's time to go home, Jack is nowhere to be seen. But it's too late. It's not a very happy ending, is it? Nana. Though, hey? What can you do? Nana. Sorry, you can lie down. While Amelia and Lucas are looked after by the Galtons, Tani has invited parents Matthew and Natalie to join her for their final consultation. I need to start this by saying you came for a particular purpose and you are leaving without your daughter having really shifted her food intake. And I wonder how you feel about that, if you're really honest with me. Uh, um, how do you feel about that? Not totally surprised that, that the eating hasn't shifted because that really wasn't our expectation, I don't think. It was our hope, but not yeah, expectation. A, yeah. a bit disappointed because I'd like to have thought we could have left here and there'd have been, you know, something new, something solid and new, you know, a hot meal mm. would have been nice. So, yeah, a bit disappointed. Mm. I need to spend this consultation with you, I think, helping you understand what the problem is. Because mm. I think we're all, we're all in the same place on the page saying it's not really about eating. Mm. Mm. Yeah, she's got a problem, but we can describe that and think about that. Well, I just think we need a much broader definition. Probably the best place to start is at the very beginning. OK. So um, <coughs> why don't we just have a look at very much what life was like for you before you came in. For three quarters of her life, she hasn't eaten any of the foods that she really needs to grow. No, Amelia, can you tell Mummy what it is? It seems so awful to think she's just turned four and she's frightened of a bowl of pasta. Come here, Amelia. She's just, she's so thin. And you can just, you know, she's just got nothing on her. <coughs> All right. All right, you tried. We're at a dead end. We don't know where else to go. We don't know, we don't know, and we don't know what else to do. Mm. That was kind of what life was like, mm. Mm -hmm. and it looked pretty hellish. Mm. What I'm thinking is that one of the big things for Amelia, before it's even about food, it's about the whole process of eating. The whole process of eating for her has been so fraught with anxiety that even getting to a table to eat is difficult. And I've seen that, and I've also seen the way she picks up foods and she's very picky with her fingers. So there is anxiety there. But then you've also got the other stuff, which is the no. It's like, yeah, it's like a bark. Mm. Mm. And that's behaviour. Yeah. yeah. So the difficulty that you've had, that we've had this week, as you say, we've been looking, 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 is that you've got these two issues running parallel. Mm. So it's hard enough getting her to sit at the table and to feel relaxed about sitting at a table. To then get her to try new fo foods is like the next step on. Mm. Yes. So the first part of the process I think you've achieved she comes much more relaxed. Yeah, she does come she, more relaxed. She'll sit down. She's had different plates and bowls and things, and she's kind of 
she's learned to chill around that. Mm -hmm. She's relaxed much more. Mm. And you need to get that back in when you go home and she's yeah. back in the kitchen yeah. or the yeah. dining room that she associates with yeah. with that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, keep it going. So then you came into the house and I guess Amelia, and good for Amelia, she then showed me exactly what you'd been living with for the last four years. So this is this is the next thing I wanted you to have a look at. I just had to put it on there like that. I don't like it. Please. No. Don't push it away. Just try it. No. Have a little bit of that. Have a bit of that and just cool down because we've been outside. It's all hot, okay? Why don't you, Amelia, just lick the spoon. Even without the spoon. Look, it's tomato sauce. You love tomato sauce, don't you? So you love tomato sauce. Look, that's just the sauce. So why don't you just try and lick the sauce for me? What do you think? Shut up. Just leave her to it. She doesn't want it. Quite clearly, mm. she does not want it. And I don't know why this natural instinct is to keep trying. You hope that <coughs> she'll just say, go on then, I'll try it. And When she's hysterical? No, no chance. No it's chance. like anyone, the moment you're upset about something, the last yeah, thing you want to just... do is sit there and have someone throw a spoon in your face. There was another kind of aspect of that in there as well, which I just wanted to talk about, which was this little moment, and I don't know if you noticed it, but it was your hand who just, you just mm. did that. What does that tell you also about the process of eating for Amelia when she's having a massive tantrum? But what else does she Probably get? That I'm, that I'm agreeing with her to, to not eat it. You rub her head, and so even if verbally you're not reinforcing what she's doing, non-verbally you are, mm. you're kind of saying it's OK. So I'm thinking anxiety, new textures, food touching, doesn't like it, anxiety. Anxious mum, spoon, spoon, spoon. Anxious dad, it's all right, darling, it's all right, darling. Split in parenting. And then I start to think about, well, this is something then bigger. This is about behaviour. This is about how you parent Amelia as a couple and how somehow with Lucas, you've, you, you're very integrated in the parenting of Lucas. But something about Amelia, her character and personality has split you both apart. There's something about her character that makes you kind of... Come here. Protective. And you... Mm. Really angry. So Wednesday was the day, Matt, when you were in Paris and you were on your own and this is what happened mm. on the Wednesday. You stay at this table right now, young lady. I'm warning you one more time. You sit back down no. right now. No! I'll take you to your room if you don't sit no, down. No, I'll count to three. Take them off for you. No. Right, you go to your room then. No. So, but that was a small part of a huge, mm. prolonged thing. You look quite upset by that. Well, just, no, just, just Amelia getting so freaked out or distressed, and and you're dealing with it in the right way, but. I know what it's doing to you as well, you know, it's, it's just, but it's you've tough, just said, it? what you've just said is completely wrong. In what way? Because what you've just seen is Amelia getting freaked out and distressed. And? But when actually what Amelia was doing was being, behaving badly mm. and not listening to what I was asking her to do. You, You've got to try and remember that you can't always feel sorry for her no, yeah. in that way. Rose, who do you yeah, want Matt to feel point. sorry for? I want him to feel sorry for me. Yeah. Because mm. I'm the one who had to put up with it. She really tears you apart as a couple. It's quite extraordinary. And I think this is the problem. I think this is the problem. When you want your husband standing next to you, mm. helping you solve a problem in the way that I, I know, I can see you will do in every other way, there's something mm -hmm. about this little girl that stops you doing it and leaves you out there feeling on your own, cross with Mac, cross with Amelia, and absolutely out there on your own. And you're there with your heart breaking, thinking, my little girl is, you know, distressed. And she was having a massive temper tantrum, mm. behaving really badly. Mm. Uh, I think Amelia is, is looking at the two of you thinking, hmm, okay. And 
it literally takes one big fight with Amelia and the behaviour will change. Yeah, it will. So all you need to do is work out how you're going to change her behaviour. But once you've got it during the day, mm. when there's less anxiety around, you will know what to do at the lunch table. But in the meantime, I've said to you, just relax. Have fun. Let her eat her foods. Let her learn to enjoy eating. Mm. And then try and change it. And this is an example of what happens when you enjoy eating, what a child can do. So that is the biscuits. And we then to lick it and taste it. <laughs> you've done really well with this, haven't you? And you've eaten half of it, which is really good. OK, and there. Nom, 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 nom. Do you like that bit? Can I do one? Uh... You do some more. Can I say to you, that was brilliant. You did that brilliantly. Just try to ignore it. She has shown you there that is exactly what you have to do. Yeah, yeah. I felt really positive after doing those cookies because I thought, oh, this is kind of like our final task of muckiness, getting in yeah. there, you know, making cookies is a nice and easy thing to do at home. Mm -hmm. And she just did it. And I really felt like that actual, that second shot of that moment where I thought I knew she was looking at me thinking, waiting for me to go, no, or whatever. Oh, yes, go on. My big clinical advice to you for your daughter is leave her alone. Yeah. Just leave her alone. Mm. It's the final day for this week's families and the time has come for them to leave the house. Hug each other, say goodbye to each other. Goodbye. <laughs> 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 These are my final <laughs> pearls of wisdom. First of all, what a lovely boy you've had. What a lovely family you are. Mm -hmm. um, routine is really important for kids. Yeah. Sleep is really important for kids. Yeah. Independence in sleep is really important for kids. And you've done all of those this week, and you have achieved amazing things. Thanks, it's been man. an Thank absolute you. pleasure. Well done, Thank babe. you. Well done. The Osher Turners are on their way home. Is it going to be a problem when Jessie gets there and goes, Ah, oh, hold on. I used to sleep in here, and there's my trampoline. Oh, and there's that corridor I used to run up and down till 1am. What happens tonight? The question you're asking is, can behaviour change in one environment generalise back to the home environment? And the answer is yes, it can. But parents need to be very clear that there might be some transition, so they have to start almost retraining him straight away. It'll be easier because he now knows he can do it and they know he can do it. But it might take a bit of time to readjust the cues, but it shouldn't take more than a few days. See ya. Hi. I came in here with a few misgivings to start off with about how it's all going to turn out. Jesse has turned full circle from being a boy who wouldn't sleep in his bed to a guy who's basically Yay. sleeping in his own bed, Yay. his own accord. I think we've done really well, it's been yeah. very good. And Thanks to Tanya, because we worked That's as a team. It's been an experience. Which we're going to hold on to. Yay! Yes, that's right, Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good boy. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. You know, Thank the less you, pressure, Tanya. the more progress. Mm. You know, progress won't be linear. It'll be a bit forward, a bit back, a bit forward. And um, she's a lovely girl, and when she knows where she stands, she's just she's fantastic. Hey, you, clever girl for eating raisins and so many things. You're the cleverest girl. Give me a cookie. I'll go with you. The day this family are leaving, are they ready to leave you yet? They are leaving in a very different way to the way they expected or indeed hoped to leave at the end of the week. But I think they have gained some new insights into their daughter. I think it's good that they recognise this isn't really specifically an eating problem yeah. because it actually then takes the pressure off food and eating for Amelia apart from anything else. But they will see it through. They just need to continue to be as relaxed about the behaviour at the meal table and is united about managing the behaviour at other times of the day. We've got some things to, to think about, to, to work on, and hopefully then this little one can start eating. 
Had a Goodness. great week though, thoroughly enjoyed ourselves. Lots to think about. What do you think, Amelia? Fine. Say Thank bye then. You. Thank bye. you. Bye. Say bye, Amelia. Mm. Bye bye, Amelia. Bye. Bye bye, Lucas. If you label your child yeah. negatively, you will have a child who behaves negatively. Yeah. Lots of fun makes a really happy family and united parenting is the way forward. Yeah. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thank the you. best present you've given us is our family back. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. The Goldens are leaving the house of tiny tearaways. Are they ready to go home and what could go wrong? Harry is likely possibly to kick off when he gets to that environment that is associated with difficulty and sadness and cross and timeouts and all the things that have gone on. They need to be patient, they need to be calm, they need to pour all the love into him that they have for his lovely side and not treat him like a monster. Because you have an expectation a child will be a monster, you set them up to be a monster, they will be a monster. Big cuddles for George. Hello. Thanks a lot, Tanya. Bye -bye. Feeling more, much more positive Bye. about the future. And I don't know what else to say. You're a bit emotional now, aren't you? Bye. Of course, there are a few little problems still. <laughs> Thank you very much. We've all enjoyed it. It's been a positive experience, and we'd recommend it to anyone. And we're going to miss Tony. Could've we're going to miss the other family week. as well. Done another <laughs> month. <laughs> Bye. Bye, Harry. You've done brilliantly. <laughs>